Good morning and welcome back. We are continuing with Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with verse 8, where we are running through verse 13. It's the end of the chapter. Uh, this continues with the call of Isaiah. Remember in the first part that we read yesterday, we heard of Isaiah seeing the Lord crying out, I am a man of unclean lips. I come from a, a people of unclean lips. And how the Lord, actually a seraph, uh, one of those angelic beings brought a coal and touched it to his lips and said uh, that your sins are atoned for. And then verse 8, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the verse that is the call of, the, of Isaiah, a, a fairly well-known verse. Notice that the man with unclean lips is now proclaiming that he wants to go. He wants to use those lips that were once unclean, that have been cleansed by the Lord and his work to proclaim God's word to the people. And God said, go and say to my people, verse 2, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the hearts of this people dull and their eyes heavy and blind their eyes, lest that they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. This is an interesting passage. It almost sounds as if God doesn't want them to hear the message, to, to believe the message. But this is kind of a way of rhetorically saying, continue to tell it to them. Let them hear it until they don't, they know it by heart. Let them con continue to tell them and continue to let them reject it. You can only do what you can do in sharing that word. They will reject that. They will fall away because of their rejection. That rejection is what dulls the heart, which blinds the eyes, which makes our ears heavy, all of those things which keep us from hearing and knowing God's word. And then in verse 11, then I said, how long, O Lord? And the Lord said, until the cities lie waste without inhabitants and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes the people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. How long? That's the question that Isaiah had. It's a question that we have as well in a different context. How long, Lord, until you come again? But here it was how long until that judgment happens, until, until this land is destroyed. How long must I continue to share this word? And the Lord says, until the cities are laid waste. If they don't repent of their sins, God is saying that he will lay the cities to waste. It's a difficult passage to hear. But man, when we rely on self and not on God, we will fall away. We will be led into destruction. For those who don't trust in the Lord, who reject his word and his promises that God has for him, he will suffer that punishment, the eternal punishment of hell, much worse than cities laid waste and peoples removed. But then there's that glint of hope at the end of this verse. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebrinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. This part that he's talking about here, and though a tenth remain in it, possibly talking about uh, the second exile. You see, when Babylon came, they took the men off, took the, the best of the best off into captivity and, and set a puppet up as king. That puppet rebelled against them and they laid the city waste, taking the rest off into captivity, just leaving a few behind. Or it could be pointing out to the remnant that would return to Jerusalem one day. 
not nearly as great as the whole, but the beginning of a new group. What I want to point out is that last line. The holy seed is its stump. The stump is the what remains of the line of David. The Davidic king tree has been would be cut down by the Lord because of the rebellion of Israel, of Judah, against the Lord. It would be cut down. Yet the holy seed is its stump. That stump would then send out a shoot. There is life there that remains. There is hope for those who are, whose lives seem hopeless. Chapter 11, verse 10 speaks more of this, this shoot from the tree of the stump of Jesse. We'll get to that in just a couple of more weeks. Um, that, that verse 11, verse 10, um, is the focus of what we are doing here at peace during Advent as we look at the Jesse tree and the line of David. We'll talk more about that in a few weeks. Until then, come back tomorrow. Uh, we are hitting uh, Isaiah chapter 7. It's the beginning of one of the, the famous prophecies. We won't quite get that to that tomorrow, but we're setting up the story to make to show why that Emmanuel prophecy is, is so important. We hope to see you then. God bless. He is with you always. Amen.